part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report. I am Tyler, the Superman of Blue, and with me is James, the Superman of Red. I'm getting over a cold because it's Ohio and people get sick. How's everybody tonight? Yeah, it got cold kind of quickly. Yeah. Oh, so remember how this is happy November, um, James. It's our first episode of November. Remember how I told you like we were doing the eight nights of Halloween, basically? Well, mm-hmm. From night two, which was a Wednesday, um, I saw a friend of mine at their trunk or tree, and it was warm outside. Skip to the Tuesday that follows, and it is so cold that poor James is getting snow, and I got sick. Because I didn't wear a thick enough coat to walk around because I was wearing my Ted Lasso um, sweater. And I didn't want to cover it up because that helped sell my costume, and I got sick. Uh, so, yeah, it, yeah it was real cold here. It snowed really heavily. The next morning, it looked like winter. Um, you, you saw, I sent you a picture. <laughs> and I shared it with people. Um, They're like, oh, dear Lord. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it snowed on Halloween for trick-or-treating. We literally, and we have a decently long street, a few blocks, you know, heading down this way to the corner and then around the corner to the park. It's a nice bend down there. We got down to the bend. And we turned around and come back, and it was against the snow and the wind. Like, had the baby, had Allura inside of the coat, you know? And she was already layered up, but it was, like, going against the wind. So, like, had her layered up inside of my coat, holding her (laughs) to try and keep her warm to get back to the house. And then Jimmy ran the whole way back down the street. I mean, (laughs) we're going to have a rough winter. It's gonna be cool. Uh, I don't gonna... want that because I have to remove snow, and that means long nights in the tractor and sh- and uh, salting sidewalks. Well, that's why you're Superman Red. <laughs> 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 strong, strong man. So, yeah, um, yeah. So I sound a little deeper, but let's jump into some news here because we got a little bit of news, a little bit. Um, as of now, the Australian premiere of My Adventures with Superman. Should be, they should have it now. Um, we had the premiere date. And finally, our good friends over in Australia will be able to watch it without having to pirate it. You know who you are. Um, There's been more TV spots for Aquaman 2. But not a second trailer. And I'm really shocked we haven't got a second trailer yet. Well, I wonder if that has anything to do with the strikes. You know what I mean? The marketing and everything. I mean... Maybe uh, Aquaman has been moved back to Friday. Whole oh, wow. the twenty two the, days. Yeah, but I'm and I'm just kind of like, okay, all right. This is they should have left it at Wednesday. Um, they should have moved Wonka up because there's not really anything coming out tremendous in um November. I mean, the Hunger Games, I guess. Dude, at this point, like, it doesn't surprise me if Warner Brothers is just like, you know what I mean? Like, crap on the DC <laughs> movie. Even the sequel to the their billion dollar hit. But my, you know? my th- they're, and, they're talking and, about like whatever. Like, at one point in between, at one point in time, you have to have sat down, looked at your slate, and realized, oh crap, we're releasing two larger films a week apart. <laughs> you know, like. You think, but you know what I mean. Like some sometimes you just you you don't know what the hell is going through their heads at times over there. Like some things seem like, like you said, like oh we got two like big movies. You know, yes, it's a DC movie, but it's also the sequel to the only billion dollar movie you made in the that entire run uh, right. of the DC EU. Like it's a sequel to that. And then you're putting a lot of money and and a lot of backing behind Wonka because of 
uh, what's his name, Chalamet? Timothy Chalamet. Yeah, um, from Dune. And <clears throat> they're putting a lot of money and, and faith and hype behind that. But it's like... <laughs> All right, December 1st. Is stupidity. You should have dropped Wonka December 1st. Or, I'm looking at my calendar here. Either December 1st or December 8th. Because December 8th, yeah, you should have dropped it December 8th. There is, that gives you, if you just dropped it December 8th, that gives you two weeks after Wish and Napoleon had come out. And there's nothing that's in that market tier that comes out at that time. So you move it up a week, that gives you two weeks between it and Aquaman. Because already Aquaman comes out, and you have, which, the movie, Illuminations movie Migration, that should have came out this weekend. Because it has a, it's about birds migrating for the winter and fall. Should have come out now, it would have been a cool Thanksgiving type movie, um, to see with the family. But whatever, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> so it, it hurts the head sometimes, like just thinking about like how they make these dumb decisions the way they do. For real, bro. Okay. So the Batman skin is coming to Arkham Knight. It's on console PC games. It's on PC, but consoles are supposed to be in December. You're supposed to be seeing the mod of the batman for arkham knight i thought that was pretty cool the penguin series has been pushed to fall of 2024 um so that is one of potentially four pro projects maybe three or maybe five dc projects for 2024 um being penguin season two of my adventures of superman um Creatures Commandos is supposed to be seven episodes, and it's supposed to be coming out sometime in 2024. Um, and then maybe the Batman Cape Crusader thing, whenever it's I was supposed say, to say, I out. just saw it like 2025. What? Pushing Creature Commandos. You saw 2025? I could have swore it was 2025 that I saw. Hmm. I was like, because I could have swore it was 2025, because I was like, really? Yeah. Like, I... That far out right now? Yeah, I... uh yeah, I haven't. Uh, I saw 2024. So okay, there will I'll be some DC. You on that. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> there will be some DC representation in 2024, but it won't be as big as it has been. Um, Superman and Lois. The writers' room for the show has been sh has shrunk from eight to five for, because of the budget cuts, and Superman and Lois will end after season four's ten episode run. So we will get one more season, ten more episodes. And we will have to say goodbye to Superman and Lois. The Superman show we didn't know that we needed. And the one that we want. And we really don't want to say goodbye to. But the one thing I will say is. If it goes out on high quality. I'm happy for it. Then it continuing and just dwindle. You know much like. I miss the Flash. But the show was. They just got rid of Eric Wallace. I hate. I hate talking bad about someone. And I say I can tell, like, I finished watching Teen Wolf the last season. I hadn't, I hadn't watched it. And I just was watching it, and I was like, man, this writing is off. And then I saw that it was Eric Wallace who did it. And he, like, did that and then went to Flash. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's why. So I'm sorry I'm not hating. I'm just saying I think you can just tell when he comes on a show what happens. Mm, right. Um. So I, I miss I miss the Flash, but... Uh, I just want Superman and Lois to go out on a high. You know. So, um, but that's that's really all the DC news I got, man. Well, you know, we know it's a slow time uh, for news right now with, with the strikes and everything going on. Um, we, yeah, nothing's, nothing's coming out yet. So, but yeah. Um, we will, we will stay connected and keep updating as fast as we can. Um, we have an announcement. 
something that James and I have toiled, toiled around talking about. Um, as I've mentioned, um, my local comic book store closed. It's like 45 to, minutes to an hour to be on traffic to get to a shop. Um, I really don't want to do mail subscriptions because I just, I'm cheap. I don't want to pay for shipping. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know and do it once a month I, uh, i'd rather and risk damage to right you, i'd rather take the adventure of going to the shop like i can shop online and pick up in store and i might do that um that looks like that's what i'm doing but I'll also say that james and i are going to a review model of when they drop on dc um you know as much as i hate saying it it is the uh the holiday season and that means budgets get tighter um as much as I love buying and reading comics, I'm paying for the app and using that. Um, it's been harder on me because of my job times and stuff to get to the shop. Um, I know that James's shop has had issues where they've changed their hours and because of where he lives, getting to it's not as easy and convenient. So we've both been kind of behind and picking up current books. So we just decided we're just going to review stories as the issues come to the app. And then we're going to talk about uh, miniseries as they finish. Like upcoming next week, we know that the Superman um, Iron Curtain, is that what it is? Uh, 78 metal sequel. Curtain. Metal Curtain. Let me get my history. Yeah, the 78 stuff. sequel. Um, we're just going to review that when all six issues are out. So we can talk about it as a story. Um, James alluded to the fact doing it issue by issue is like trying to review a book chapter by chapter. Um, so we're going to be just kind of you know, like we talked about before, Superman Lost. When that's completed, we will just review the whole book and talk about it that way. It's much easier to kind of get the, a grasp of the full story, what we like and didn't yeah. like, than breaking it down by chapter. Yeah. And honestly, sometimes, you know, like talking about a book, like the week it comes out, like some people don't get to the to, to the shop every week. Some people only go once every other week or once a month to pick up their books, you know? So, I mean, with, with it on the app there, um, being able to, um, uh, read it with ultra, the way it comes out only one month later, um, it's not far behind. Um, and yeah, it, it really is. It's, it's the holiday season for one, two. It's like, it's just, uh, um stress man it's yeah i mean it's the this, stress of trying to get to the store is, and stay on time yeah like other... so much going on and this inflation is killing me financially it's that's hard like i feel like i have to even cut back on the limited amount of books that i do get right now <coughs> just just to keep buying them and i mean like we had a previous episode <sighs> we talked about how many individual issues do you go grab out of your short boxes or your uh, yeah, long boxes. Absolutely. I much rather grab a trade. So yeah. that's just a shift. Like as much as I like have that FOMO. Um Yeah. I never and, like that I exciting... never dip into my short box my short and long boxes. I never dip into them. But as I'll much... grab the trades off my shelf. Right, exactly. So that's just something we'll be doing. Um okay. It's it's yeah. tough, you know. It is it's a it's it's the way that comics have always been, you know, reading books, getting the issues, keeping up on them lovely thing with the app with the accessibility is we do get to keep up on them um and and actually more than i could ever buy i can keep up on so i love that about it too um so we're gonna move on um the next thing we're gonna talk about is has dc really become all about family (laughs) um which is like the best line from Shazam too, because me and the family use it all the time. Um, it's even Genius text tone. And <laughs> this is kind of something that you and I've kind of talked about, but our good friend Anthony was talking about this on a previous episode. And I kind of really wanted to hit on it and talk a little bit more with you about it. And basically Batman has always kind of had the bat family um, from the sidekicks and all that. And I think, you know, second with that has kind of been green arrow. And then we've gotten the Flash kind of family over the past few years. And then we got, um, they've kind of made a Green Lantern type family going on with all the lanterns. But now we have the super family. 
And we've always kind of had the super family with, you know, Superman, Supergirl, Lois, um, Superboy. But now it's gotten bigger and bigger. And I sat down and I got, so I kind of mapped it out, right? And my question is, is the super family gotten too big? And here are the members. And if you're reading action, they've all kind of been touched on and brought into the fold at some point. And we'll kind of talk about this, but we have <clears throat> Superman Clark, Superboy slash Superman John, Superboy Connor, Superman of China Keenan, Power Girl Paige, Supergirl slash Superwoman, because they use it sometime, and that's Kara. We have Super Twin 1 and 2, which is Oz Lou and Oz. Oz. How you never get their names right? <laughs> Otho. Otho and Oslo. Asul. Yeah. Asul. See, I was yeah, getting O-S-U-L, there. O-S-U-L. Okay, I can't I read. Okay, stop making fun of me, James. <laughs> Steel, John Henry, Steel, Nat. And then we're getting Superwoman Red, Lana, back. We have Val Zod showing up, and we have Crypto. That's 13 Kryptonian-esque characters now i know what you're thinking here is your reminder take my meds yeah take your meds and even even if you want to throw out there the eradicator for 14 however that factors into things so i ask you james is the super family too big uh too big for one book um like too big for action you know what i mean like i do know what you mean that's yeah, what we're talking is, about this. Yeah, yeah. It is nice to see like them <laughs> actually interacting with one another because that like almost never happened. You know, you've gone years without them ever speaking to each other. Uh, and if it was like books. one or two books, like a three issue arc, cool. Like they're all coming together for a mission. But just having them all around in Metropolis. They all seem like they're staying at Lois and Clark's apartment. Right. Like there's like 14 Kryptonians in one friggin' well, not all of them are there all the time, but still, but, there's like, a group of like eight of them there, like consistently all the time. Like, I, I, I love Steel, and I think Steel works great on his own. And I think Steel, you know, he's not the same power set, he's part of the family, you know, but he's not the same power set, so he's fine. Um, Keenan is interesting, is a Superman of China because his powers are different but yet is connected um he has you know his own book he bounces in and out of and so that's fine but like it's just it's to the point where it's like we've talked about before when you have the last son of krypton now it's like the last kryptonian birth son you know the um but we're having all these other characters showing up and like i, I said to you I think Connor and Paige have a, so, and you could even maybe Keenan have like a similar um, tone to them that they should get their own book and they should be off in like another country or another city um, or even out in space. Yeah. Like Connor I mean, was well, for. Yeah. Right. Like Connor was for his book. And I wanted to give Connor his own code name, but they kind of stole that in a way. And I'll talk about that more in one of our uh, comics reviews. Um, so it's like they're trying to bring back Connor and we have John and now they don't know what to do with John because stupid Bendis aged him up. And then the whole, they're into the 5g thing. And, and then the twins, all right. How do you feel about the twins? Because I really uh, feel like I feel like they were an idea that never really worked. Yeah, I mean, it was. A, it, I think they were a, a good idea at the time to like, um, have have Superman and Lois <laughs> dealing with these kids and have that interaction like with John. You know, like John kind of having siblings. Um, also. Like the idea of them wrestling with 
which they did it and it didn't need to be dragged out, which was fine. You know, like people, the, the concern if they were like replacing John because he grew up without his family. Um, they didn't get to experience his life. They didn't get to experience him growing from an 11 year old to an 18 year old. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, but that ran its course. Um, but now that you have them all in there all the time, they're just around, you know? Um, right. Like we don't get getting... Lois and Clark interacting with the twins. We're not getting like, it's just Lois and Clark with the twins. We're not getting that at all. So we're not even seeing them as parents again. Mm hmm. Yeah, um, you're not you're not getting any of that. Um, I'm much more and, interested and the, in the idea of the like the Olgren's fire, like the the fact that one of them could potentially like flip out with this this godlike power that's inside of them, but nothing's like coming of that. I mean, I feel like something's gonna have to because I Philip Kennedy Johnson's leaving the book, and I don't see other writers really wanting to continue with these characters. Um, point taken, like in Superman, you don't ever really see them or reference them I can think of. <laughs> um, I just, I feel like they were an idea, but like, I like the idea of the super family together, but gosh, there are so many, like, you know, even like taking out the ones like we talked about, like Valzad. He, I was so excited when he showed up and he was going to be with, I thought, John in the John's book for a while, and then he was gone. So like he's a character that would be interesting to come out or have his own book. Yeah, I was so sad how quickly he how quickly he was removed from the story. Or I'm saying like Superboy, Valzad, and Paige, Power Girl, have their own book in space or on another Earth. Like they go to Earth 2 or something. I don't know. I'm just saying like you got to break this up. Find the dynamics that work, uh, much like you did when you gave Red Hood and the Outlaws kind of thing. Um, something like that. <laughs> uh, you know, Steels and Steelworks and that, they pop into action. So that's, you know, that works. But I just feel like, you know, if if action was a book where we got many stories of each character and it, it would be cool, but not all of them together. Um, I, we missed out on the idea of, john and connor together where john's slightly younger looking up to connor like a brother or like an uncle you know like mm -hmm. uncle connor um much like that reference in that tore our heart out in young justice um mm -hmm. so i just feel like the super family is too big because it diminishes and, and anything else it diminishes back to clark like yeah in every book they have to find a way to make Superman still be like the granddaddy of them all, the man, you know, um, like a book will review. I was going to so, say like, like right now, Superman in these books, um, other super family books like power girl, um, and, and, uh, Superboy, uh, he's, he's like what we, um, were, were thinking, they should have done with like Cavill in the movies, like come in as this, this cameo, this, um, like mess messianic figure, um, to, to help people steer them in the right direction or, or, you know, or, um, uh, <laughs> like if they were having, doubts like he would help them believe in themselves again you yeah. know kind, kind of like tony stark did for for um uh, tom holland spider-man and i want you know? people as we go about these next two episodes catching up on comics i really want our listeners to think about what we're talking about right now and we'll bring this up as we continue is the super family too big should the characters be split up into more diver diverse books? Right. Should well, John, should John be aged back down to being like sixteen? Yeah. Ooh. Um. <laughs> and you know, I think something's going to happen with the twins before Johnson leaves the book. 
Um, well, as we go forward talking about these books, um, we are going to kind of see how they have these these smaller stories of the of some of these characters doing their own thing. Um, like we got a Power Girl book. Um, you know, there's there's a story of Keenan and like there's a couple of stories there that could be, you know, wrapped into some other book so that way somebody the interactions are more flushed out instead of ten pages in these small stories and it takes three months to get like a single issue worth of story. Yeah, I mean, so let's get into some comic read. Which book would you like to start with? Um, let me see here. So, the book I got up first is actually Superman number seven. Good, start with the best, all right. <laughs> um, I'm most happy. I got to my comic shop, um, and... This was the last one they had of the cover that me and Solomon were recreating with the boy in front of the window. Um, so I was really happy that I got the last Bermejo cover. Oh, nice. Okay. So, first of all, I don't hate the artwork, but I'm not a huge fan of the artwork inside. It looks very uh, 2000s-y. Um, that's... Yeah, I almost thought the way that Superman looks in the first, um, the first time spread. you see him in the issue, yeah, the spread, um, almost looked uh, McGinnis. I even, I even went back to the page to see if it was. I was like, that doesn't... Like, the rest of the book doesn't quite look like that, but that one does. Yeah, exactly. Um... Uh... But, you know, in this, it picks up where we left off. Perry's running for mayor. And the Chained, um, I guess is what we're calling him, Mm -hmm. we learn is Sammy Stryker. As in from Stryker's Island. (laughs) And he recognizes Perry. Um, And then, of course, you see, we're reading Superman. Here comes Kong Keenan, Supergirl. Um, Nat, isn't Nat still just called Steel? Yes. Um, and, um, is that John? No, that's Connor. So, here they all come, you know, and they're all fighting with the chain. And Jimmy's like, where's Superman? And we see that Superman, um, is trapped. And they're talking about they need to get Lex Luthor. Because he's the only one that can free from this prison. Okay. And. uh, Mercy's like. She says that the more of your super strength. You use to try to escape. The more it uses that same strength. To hold you there. And he's like, are you vibrating? It's just going to match your speed. And Superman says this baller line. You said it uses my power against me. But I have more than one power. <laughs> and then we just see. Whoa. And then we're back to. You know, the chain fighting and um, Superman shows up and says he's family punching, you know, this dude hardcore and then mentions your symbol is on Lex's building and he was with Lex and he continues to you know fight. And we learn that he has tactile telekinesis. Um, he starts to crush two buildings. Connor tries to stop it. Um, and it doesn't really work as well as they wanted it to. Yeah, Superman as, and Kara save all the people from the buildings. Um, I've said this before, but I'm not a fan of tactile telekinesis for Connor. I just prefer him to have just Kryptonian powers more on a diminished level like Young Justice. I think it makes him a more interesting character being more like the Superman of the golden age. Um, 
and it gives him a little bit more of an arc, much like we saw in Young Justice. Um, but yeah. there's Dr. Farm. I still think he should be Dr. Pharma. I don't know. It just sounds cooler. Um, and Mr. Graft. And they're there. And then we get to Lex Luthor in the bed, you know, uh, wanting to get out. Lois Lane shows up. Basically says Lex is one of the good guys right now. But I really like Lex's speech um, when it shows him from the day we met. Superman showed me compassion and it shows kind of him and Clark, his kids and Lex in the battle suit, Lex in the super suit, like throughout the different times. He talks about how it was himself that got in the way. Um, and there's a question I have to often ask myself when you look into the abyss and the abyss looks back, what happens if you, if the abyss looked back and saw Superman, could he change the abyss the way he has changed me? Uh, <coughs> um, and and then you know Lois and him talk, and she says, it "All sounds like a villain monologue, Lex." But then this is the one that threw me right here. All right, here's where continuity gets poo pooed on. Okay, Lex's mom shows up, and it's Luticia Luther. Right? Is that how you would say it? Luticia or Luticia? Um, probably Luticia, I believe. Trying to find where he said, yeah. Uh, it's L E T I C. Yeah, Leticia. Leticia. Maybe. Maybe it's all about Leticia. Something like that. So, where does that come from? Because I've never heard that. Me either. You know, like, it's always been Lillian Luther every time I've heard Lex's mom. Okay? I mean, that's always what I've heard for Lex's mom. Yeah, shouldn't that be like an editor thing? Like, this is this is the name of Lex's mother? I, I'm just like, you know, I'm like, okay. Like, no, I'm not, like, because then. Well, then also the next part. <laughs> that's what I'm about to say. Then the next part, who shows up? But Lena Luther, his daughter? I thought yeah. Lena was his sister. Now, I know that in the 90s, there was a like a weird thing where he had a daughter and it was Lena. Oh, was there? Yeah, so, and that's another Cause, thing. Because like, the, only, the only one I remember is when she was like, uh... Where she where his sister was like abused by their father, by him, you know, um, when they were younger, and he had gone back, right? Like, and wasn't she like um, in a wheelchair at one point? Yeah, like it gets confusing. I'm like, why do you use the same names? Like, this should be his daughter, Lutitia, or Lutitia. Yeah. Okay. And his and why, mother should have been Lillian. And why does his daughter look like Brainiac? Yeah, why does she have a Brainiac thing on her head? Like yeah. three dots? And then her color, like her eyes are green. She got purple in her makeup. Right? And then it cuts to... And I would say that because the, the page next to it is Brainiac. And we see where Brainiac's talking about fighting Superman. And blah, 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 blah. I'm a bad guy. But then he talks about how... How is Earth a planet that has raised and spawned so many superpowered people of different kinds when there's a planet that has basically human life, humanity, and all they can do is like manipulate metal? And then he releases uh, the Karza, the, what do you call it? The Zarnians. Zarnians, yeah. I was like, wait a minute, Tyler, why can't you? <laughs> On the planet, and he tells them to destroy it. And he sends them down there to do to basically destroy the planet. And we learn that Brainiac is trying to make life. So Yeah. That that interesting thing, like like so does he have a Zarnian city or is it just the Zarnians like that he that he's kept? Well, I think he bottled a Zarnian city is what it was. 
I mean, that's just what I assume because if we yeah. saw. Yeah. Um. And like they named one of them Brawl. Yeah, I, I feel like it's getting harder to name characters in comics that, you know. Mm hmm. At least in this way, they actually they spelled Brawl as B R A A L. Um, so it's, it makes, it makes a little more sense. Like it could be an alien name instead of just like a noun, <laughs> like insomnia. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I told you like insomniac would have been cool or insomniatic or something like that. Like, yeah, it's a little bit more of a mouthful, but at least it sounds more like a comic book name than just a word. Hey. Blue. Well, that's an. I mean, it's a name, but you know what I'm saying. Hey, pants. I'm gonna call you pants now, James. Pants. What's up? <laughs> Why? That's your superhero name. Pants. That's your superhero name. Pants. <laughs> Fighting the battle for truth, justice. Pants. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I love that issue. Actually, I. I think it worked by giving us just enough of the battle with the chain and a little bit of who that was. Um, and then into the Lex stuff and then the Brainiac at the end. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, f for me in the, the comics, I mean, yeah, my, like my favorite version of Superboy is the young justice version. Um, but this is the version of Superboy that I've always known in the comics. Uh, with the tactile telekinesis, um, yeah. and and I think I think in certain ways I think Superboy, with the idea of the tactile telekinesis, makes more sense. Um, being able to like catch and hold a building, as opposed to Superman catching and hold a build holding a building from a single point. Because the tactile tele telekinesis is like holding the entire structure together. No. You know? That does make complete sense from a physics point. Yes. I will be a little bit more lenient on the tactile telekinesis. Is if in this story, it's explained that this Sammy Stryker was like one of Lex's earlier experiments or something. And he was trying to give his friend powers. And then he perfected the way to do the tactile telekinesis power. And that's why he inclu incorporated in the cloning process of the him and Superman clone that became Superboy. Right. Like if there's more of an origin for where the tactile telekinesis comes from, I'll be a little bit more lenient on it because right now it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like how uh, you, you clone Superboy and he gets tactile telekinesis. So... Yeah, like it does make it would make more sense as if, if it was some sort of power that was you know derived from this character before some something that was developed from before. Um, I wish I would have seen like more of how Superman escaped instead of just like looking at Mercy saying "Wow." No, you you gotta say or, it like whoa. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> whoa, whoa. whoa. Um. <laughs> There's two words like, that you say like Keanu Reeves. It's whoa and yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, so, like, what's the idea? You know, because it's going to match your strength. It's going to match your speed. What is his other powers going to do to get him out of there? You know? I'm just thinking, like, if he did them all at one time, like, it couldn't, it couldn't match multiple powers at once. Yeah, yeah, I guess that, I guess that makes sense. That's my headcanon because it didn't really give us anything other than just the wow. Yeah, so... Um, that, uh, like I said, I kind of like the tactile telekinesis in this story, especially because of like that, trying to hold the buildings together while they are able to save people. Um, that I did like, and then the, the Lex Luthor speech, I did like the, 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 the series of panels, like them, see them being younger. The next panel is, Lex having to Lex looking up at Superman, which we've seen in a lot of media. Yeah. Um, uh, most famously Lois and Clark. Um, all you have to do is look up. We get the, uh, the green and purple, uh, suit 
we get the hero, the Superman suit that Lex wears um, from the New 52. Um, so I really did, I, I like that. Uh, kind of like giving you this this history, like this is like like Birthright and and Secret Origin. And, and then you get some of like the 90s and you get the New 52. Like it's really, really pulling it all together you know what i'm saying yeah um so i i like that um and then i like the brainiac stuff and the zarnians um interesting thing talking about like how other planets have evolved beings like humanity um but not have the ability, you know, the the amount of power that Earth has amassed. Yeah. Um, and then seeing other Zarnians, I mean, I just assume that we're going to get Lobo again here coming soon um, to really kind of, like, eradicate these guys. Because he doesn't put up with other Zarnians, especially ones who try to be more badass than him. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. I tried to mute. Okay, so now let's get into um, Action Comics 1058. Dark Mirror. Yeah, I wasn't really excited about this cover. Um, really wasn't excited where this was going. I'll be honest. This is New Worlds Part 2, where it's going to be like, oh, so somebody looks like Superman who's evil. Great. Great. <laughs> right. So Clark and him battle. And I mean, I'll be honest, like this, it was fine. You know, it was okay. Um, But we learned that Lex had all kinds of Kryptonian cannons, and he basically tricks the guy into solar flaring the cannons and expelling all of his energy, and then he punches him out. I mean, it was like six pages. No, eight pages. So I was like, okay. You know, but I just, it's not what I wanted or where I wanted it to go. Um, And then we get, you know, the Blue Earther announcing what's going on. But then here we are. We're at the apartment. In walks the twins with Kara, John, and Nat in the apartment. With Kellex, <laughs> you know, yeah, like we were just like we were just talking about. Then in walks Clark, who's you know getting his powers back. I mean, the best part of this is when Kara takes him and says, um, "I found this in the Great Library of Candor. It's a book of the House Fables of Krypton." And she explores. She explains to them that you know the you two are Philosian. That makes it a little more complicated. When a Kryptonian house joined the Philosians, their names, sigils, and stories were struck from the records. But this book was written before all that. The House of Ra is in here. And I thought you might like to hear your house fable. This was the most interesting part. And this is where we learn about great warriors of Star Child and Red Sun. When we see Red Sun with his big red cape and sword. Red Sun was the name that Brian and I kind of talked about. Would be a cool like code name for Connor to give yeah. him his own name. Um, I think Bendis at one point was going to do it because um, I remember a tweet comment that was made, but I don't think it never happened because he was the great one that named uh, Tim Drake Drake as a code name. <laughs> right. Um, Just use your last name. It's it's the name of a bird. It's cool. <coughs> All right, cool. Um, Clark basically says his powers are diminished, and he needs some help from John Henry. And then the leader of the Blue Earth goes into some sort of underground crypt tomb, and we see it looks like Etrigan the Demon, tied up, drained of power. She pours energy into a green pool. Talks about she can believe she can turn one of the Kryptonians. On their side, and there's like three heads in this green pool sphere. 
And then we see John Henry working. And in the last panel, it's Clark with a sword, much like we saw with Red Sun, in his own steel suit of armor. James, thoughts? Um, so, I mean, yeah, the beginning, it was like, oh, yeah, you're just, you're going to look like Superman, and you're going to try and wreck the world's faith in Superman by destroying stuff because you look like him. Like, that's been done before. <laughs> Um, not necessarily. It was just like, that is not, I, I think it was a setup though. You know what I mean? It's a yeah. setup for the end of the story. So, um, I do like how he, I, I like how he tricked him. Like he doesn't have the ability to utilize his powers. Um, uh, the, the Krypton, the Kryptonite cannons, like all, all over in space and on buildings and stuff. Uh, as a like a convenient insert um if lex had these types of weapons he would have probably used them on superman at some point you would think yeah yeah i mean <laughs> exactly what they are i mean i he would have used them you know um so it's just kind of a convenient plot device in in that respect um i i I really did just prefer him tricking him into like creating a solar flare um, and, and burning through all of his power. Uh, We do see that he is, that he takes off the, the, the gauntlet, the, the cuff that the blue earth young uh, woman was wearing when she was being interviewed by Clark. (laughs) Uh, makes me wonder if if they know the identity of Superman and why they would be playing that game. It makes me wonder knew. because that also opens a bigger question. But yeah, yeah, it really does. Um, because it seems like this thing absorbed and transferred the power to this person. Um, because they she does talk about. Um, that, uh, but he's an alien, a human body couldn't possibly store and process that energy. And like, she's saying that human beings can, can have that power and take earth back. Like it's not, it's not humans earth anyways. Um, so I, that's what I wonder is like, if, if that's what that's for. You know, is to kind of like take and transfer that power. Mm. Uh, and um, it looks like they've used they've been using trying to figure out lots of ways to amass power. They've they've got a lot of she's got a lot of artifacts, um, helms and weapons and um like beasts and things look looking like in this like storeroom where she's talking to these three heads. Um, and at least, uh, they reference war world. Um, didn't think I'd hold one of these again. So soon Superman getting a sword, uh, with his suit of armor. (laughs) Almost looks like the He-Man sword. It does. <laughs> so, all right. Next, I mean, interesting, interesting book, but you know, I mean, again, just the whole family. Like, how big is their apartment in in this in Metropolis? Because you only ever see the living room. They're yep, always sitting on the couch. You see them in the bedroom <laughs> when they put the kids to bed. Now, the next story. Secret Identity Part 1. Uh, first page, I was just like, what, what, what? We see the Worm Emperor. Like I said, naming characters. Um, He has their Superboy, Supergirl, and the twins. And then Keenan shows up. And they stop him. He, he says, smashes oh. this dude in the back of the head and shatters his helmet and everything. It's like, you just like killed this guy. <laughs> yeah. 
And then um, uh, the twins say, Keenan cannot be on our team. We know why he's always comes in the nick of time. We know his secret. Keenan Kong is a spy. And we have evidence. Superboy, follow us. So they go back to Keenan's apartment. <coughs> Excuse me. And he has his uh, machine that's, you know, analyzing everything. They point at his wall with all the characters, with all, like, Superman, Superboy, all of them. And Superboy's like, Keenan. Uh, and then it flashes back to Shanghai, China, a short time ago, where they find someone dead. This happened in New Superman Volume 1. And that made me, it's like, I read New Superman, like, if that's the same one, I don't remember. Like, it's been like three years since I read it. I don't remember. Or is it like, do they are they bringing it back? I don't know. But basically, Batman of China here tells he wants him to go to Metropolis. He wants him to live in America. He wants to plant himself and find out who they are. And then, uh. Robin Pod is translating, so he's speaking kind of in English instead of, uh, you know, which is interesting because we see like the writing in red, which is the translation from uh, Mandarin, Mandarin, but then it's the same stuff right over top of it from the Robin Pod. And uh, he basically says, You already really know my name, Superboy. Why don't you tell me your name? And he's like, No. Now I thought, When does this take place? Because I thought Keenan was at the apartment with him at times, like during uh, the nightmare stuff. Mm -hmm. So is this before all that? Uh, yeah, there. Um, let me find it real fast. There is a. Uh, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Editor's note at the at the very beginning underneath the Worm King. This story takes place between the events of Actions 1050 and 1051. So why are we... Why? Why? <laughs> like, why can't... Like, the dramatic effect is gone when you're flashing back. You know, anytime you do a prequel series, it take, there's already dramatic attention lost because you already know something. Am I am I right? Um. Yeah. I mean, I can see that. You watched the Star Wars prequels. You already knew he was going to come Vader. Okay. You knew yeah. where Obi you know you know Obi Wan wasn't going to die, and you knew Le uh, Padme couldn't die or anything happened to her because she had to have kids. Yoda was safe. You knew that. Qui Gon was the only guy you thought might die, and he dies in the first movie. <laughs> right. Okay? <laughs> After Mace that, Windu. he's not in the other ones. You know. So exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone else, you already knew. You know they safe. Um. So the twins punch Keenan, and Robin bots scanning, and talking. Connor says, "Turn it off, Keenan. No more hitting my face. All this." And then it says, "Um, the soil matches a farm. One is two are owned by multinational corporations. One is registered to a renowned American reporter by the name of Clark Kent." And Keenan goes, "Hold up, Clark Kent is super." And then he starts to. Um, basically have the head explosion, uh, heart attack, nose bleeding, everything that yeah, we learned. Stroke or aneurysm or whatever. That we learned that if someone finds out Clark Kent is Superman, what happens to him? So he's laying on the ground and says, Keenan, can you hear me? Keenan Kong has no pulse. He's dead. So. But yeah, we know he's not. Right, so thanks for that tension. Gone. <coughs> and the last story is a panic at the parade with Bibbo and the Super Twins with Cat Grant and Steve Lombard. And this was just kind of a cute story of the twins trying to experience a parade and Bibbo's taking them to the Babowski family traditions. And he gets some hot dogs and the kids are like, this isn't what the Arctic is like. And they use their super breath to actually freeze the ride. And then they attack the people who are in costume playing Superman 
on the float. So, I mean, this is kind of like the fun story you would want with the kids. That I feel like could have been explained and expressed more. Because at the very end, Clark Superman does show up. Helps the kids and they say, hey, can we... They talk about how they loved um, the hot dogs. And can we do it again, Mr. Babowski? You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's kind of the story that I feel like we should have had <coughs> with these kids more often that we're not having. Because then, yeah. like, we everything's going back to what we talked about earlier about are there too many super characters? Well, this is like this is like the stories they would have done with um, uh, John Kent and Damien back when John Kent was a kid. But those were good. Yeah, because they because they were different. Like Damien was an adult in a child's body, and John was a free spirited child that they needed each other. Like with powers beyond anything Damien could, no matter his skill, could muster. You know. I just, I don't, I don't hate the twins, but I've just never really connected to them because I feel like recently we just haven't done anything with them. That puts them up front. A few here and there, and I feel like there's something coming, but that's it. All right. So, James, take us into the great comic known as World's Finest 19. James. Okay. World's Finest 19. Um, Available on the app. <laughs> yes, you can read it on DC Universe. Uh, DC Universe Infinite Ultra. It is a mouthful, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, World's Finest, the origin of the World's Finest team. Phantom Riddles Part 2. Um, Superman is battling Jack Sur. Um, we get to see this. Batman is in the Phantom Zone. Um, Alfred and a bunch of people, all the people who kind of were disappearing. Um and uh it's it's just a big battle between Superman and Jack Sir. Uh Jack Sir uh chop uh using his heat vision and blasting through uh some steel cable lines. Um he you know, he's not he doesn't match Superman's power. Our bodies need time to fully charge from Earth's sun, you're no match for me. So he, you know, severs the the cable ties and send the cable car uh, falling, which Superman uh, rescues. Um, uh, Bat, uh, Su- uh, Batman can speak to Superman from the Phantom Zone, uh, but how? If Jack Sir can push his thoughts from here, I'll be damned if I can't too. You know, just the iron will of, of Batman. <laughs> yep. Um, Excuse me, I oh, I apologize. <clears throat> it's okay. We're old. <laughs> um, he so him and Batman come up with a plan, uh, and Superman starts to antagonize Jaxor, calling out to him, calling calling him a coward, telling him to face me, um waiting for him to show up in the location. Uh, this is, uh, you disappoint me. I expected jor son to con- uh, connive a more clever trap. You and your Earth friend didn't assume I'd already calculated where the next dozen portals would open. Um, neither of you is a threat to me here. I'll prove it. And he pulls Batman out of the Phantom Zone, um, bringing him back to Earth. Um, uh, Superman, are there other Kryptonians on Earth? Uh, yes, this bottled city of Kandor, um, where Jaxor is using his heat vision to like cook the bottled city of Kandor, make it extremely hot. I love um, that Jaxor looked like he did in the animated series. Yeah, I, I do like that. That's the way he looks as well. I think I said that last time when he showed up. Yep, um, just reiterating it. Right. Um, Alfred, uh, sees this entity, this alien being 
um, working on a device uh, in the Phantom Zone. But it kind of like comes and goes. It, it disappears on him. Um, so while in the fortress, Superman is fighting Jack Sewer, um, Batman is looking for uh, a red shaped spotlight. Uh, red shaped like a spotlight. Um, he's looking for the Phantom Zone projector. Um, he he finds the Phantom Zone projector, and Jack Sawyer, your advantage has expired in abilities. I am finally your equal in combat. It's not even close. He's uh, he's a, a military man uh, and a scientist, much uh, more skilled fighter than Superman. Um. So they're fighting, and Batman shows up. He has the Phantom Zone projector trying to um, banish Jack Sewer back to the Phantom Zone. And Jack Sewer quickly dispatches Batman and crushes the projector, but it has nothing in it. It's empty. And no, he gets sent back to it. He says, don't look at, uh, don't look at me, megalomaniac, repurposing the projector circuitry into the crystal floor was Superman's idea. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, interestingly, he was able to, you, he was able, Batman is able to repurpose Kryptonian technology. <laughs> uh, they finally catch up to the Riddler and they arrest him. And in the epilogue, this being, um, not I, not Aether the Messiah, no matter how long it may take, no matter the sacrifice required, I swear to every wretch damned to this purgatory, they will someday be released from their torment. So this, uh, who, whoever this Aether is, um, is going is plan is to release all of the um, criminals from the Phantom Zone. And that's the end of World's Finest 19. You there? You're on. You're muted. And as you know, we will be reviewing. Um, if you look, the Aether character, um, Action Comics in 2024. So that's going to tie. It's not going to continue in the world's finest. It's going to be, um, when the new writer takes over Action Comics. Yeah, that's going to be cool. Because next month in this, we return to the world of Kingdom Come, in World's Finest. So that'll be Which I'm looking forward to. I can't wait till 20 drops. Right. I agree. Okay. So as you know, we've been reviewing justice league action. So now it is time to go to galaxy or zombie King first. It was released Saturday, February 4th of 2017. Batman teams up with John Constantine, Satana and swamp thing. when Solomon Grundy tries to raise a zombie, a zombie army. This one was fun. Sayla and I rewatched this today and it had them like in the whole New Orleans flair. And I kind of wish Batman wasn't in it <laughs> just because I'm like, he doesn't have to be in everything. I think just having Zatanna, Constantine and Swamp Thing would have been enough. Um, it allows those characters time to shine. Um. Sayla and I both kind of agree on this, no disrespect. But I'm not really digging the Swamp Thing voice that Hamill's doing. No. It's not uh deep enough or like I don't know, planty enough. <laughs> it is not it is not a voice I 
ever expected. I, I, I will definitely say the first time I watched it, I heard Mark Hamill was doing the voice for Swamp Thing, so I was very curious and very interested, and it was jarring to hear that voice because it's not it's not a voice that you associate with Swamp Thing in any um in any version uh of Swamp Thing that I've, you know, you've seen movies, uh cartoons, um anything like the old 90s cartoon. He had a very uh, kind of voice, like layered, much like Dick Durock's voice. I don't even know. Maybe Dick Durock did the voice on the animated series. Um, but even the Swamp Thing that appeared in the horrible Harley Quinn and Batman movie. And then, of course, Swamp Thing appeared in the Justice League Dark movie. Man, that was cool. So, yeah, I just, I'm not digging the voice that Hamill did. Um, but I not do like my that. my favorite Really, I mean, it's funny to say like Mark Hamill's voice is not my favorite. Maybe That's why I said no disrespect. Character. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I think the I think the action and the things they did with Swamp Thing in this issue were pretty cool, or this episode were pretty cool. I agree. I mean, has Grundy ever been tied to the rot before? Do you know? Because I think I like the idea of Grundy fighting Swamp Thing. Um. Not that I know of that he's been, but it kind of seems like, uh, why hasn't it, you know? Like, right. He, Much like he how Beast Boy could branch out from uh, Gotham and I mean, do something more. Much like Beast Boy's been tied to the red. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, uh, I like that. I like that Swamp Thing had a little bit of an arc in this. Like, there's a one point. Where he's like, oh, I've I haven't missed humanity. There's like a baby that cries when he sees him, and then at the end, the same baby sees him and just kind of smiles and cheers. So I, I enjoyed it. It was fun. It's always interesting to see Zatanna, um, one character that should have appeared on the Arrowverse that never did. Zatanna and the Question. I feel like pretty easy characters they could have brought in, but I digress. The next episode is Galaxy Jest. I was a little bummed because I thought it was Galaxy Quest. I was like, oh, that's funny, but no, it's Jest. Mm -hmm. Saturday, February 11th, 2017, day before my birthday. Wonder Woman and Superman have to rescue the Joker from Mongol, while Batman and the Flash try to stop the Clown Prince of Crime's massive laughing gas bomb hidden somewhere in Gotham. Loved this one. Loved it. Yeah. From just the amazing portrayal of Superman, um, Wonder Woman battling it out, having. Uh, Joker deliver the. <laughs> I tried to Sale and I were watching it, and then, uh, you know I was like, "Well, Mongol abducted the Joker, and Superman is trying to save him." She goes, "Why? He's a villain." I'm like, "Well, Superman saves everybody, Sailor. They're just going to take him back to jail." She's like, oh, "Okay." And <laughs> the Joker says, "Yes, go, Superman." And then he pauses, like, "Ugh, yuck." <laughs> <laughs> right. <coughs> so, and then at and the that's end, definitely Hamill doing the Joker again, right? Oh yeah, Hamill. There's an okay. episode coming up where it's Hamill, all the characters that Hamill voices in a car together. Nice. I can't wait for that one. I yeah, it's been a it's, long time since I've seen it. Well, th there's certain ones I for like I've forgotten certain ones that I've only watched one time, so I'm really enjoying this rewatch. Like this was a great one that I had forgotten about. You know, Superman's battling Mongol. They're trying to save the Joker. It has the Flash working with Batman. And then they save the gas bomb. And Superman sucks in all the gas. And then basically releases it on Mongol and all the war zoons. So they're all laughing at yeah, the end. He kind of had a, he kind of even snickered while he's holding in all of the laughing gas. Superman gives a chuckle. Uh, on his way out to deliver the gas to the war zoom and the ship. <laughs> I just think about Peter Griffin. Smell the gas. Smell it. Um, no, I just I just questioned it real quick. I was like, yeah, that's definitely Hamill, but I wanted to like verify um, just because like Troy Baker has done uh, the Joker, and he's very much doing like almost a Mark Hamill impression. He's very good. 
but this definitely seemed this definitely sounded more like Mark Hamill. So, <coughs> oh yeah, it is. So I loved it. Uh, it. It's funny though how Mongol brings him to just make them laugh. <laughs> like why? Uh, <laughs> why is Mongol bringing him there to make him laugh and not fight? Or you're to have him make everybody laugh and not fight. Because it's a kid's show. But still. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I and I liked uh, Batman and Flash doing their thing. Um, the uh, too late for the bomb to go off, which is actually something that I like appreciate uh, from time to time in Batman stories. Like, he has to he has to overcome something that's already happened. He's not one of these heroes who's fast enough and strong enough to prevent everything from happening. Um, but the bomb goes off, the laughing gas goes off, and Flash is like, all right, my time to shine, and uses his arms to create a lot of wind to try and stop the gas from dropping into Gotham before Superman arrives. It's, uh... I like this episode as well. It's really good. Mm -hmm. I even like how Superman is there when Mongol's about to throw the Joker out of the airlock, and as he's coming at him, he catches him by his face. I think that I need more of a good um, Mongol and Superman battle. Right. Kind of like the um, uh, uh, for the man who has everything. Um, yeah. <laughs> Beat the crap out of him. <laughs> That is the best. Yeah. Um, we definitely need a live-action Mongol. You know? You hear that, James Gunn? I mean... he listens to the Krypton Report. Um, so, yeah, he does. Yeah. So, but, we need to see Mongol versus Superman in this big, badass battle. We also need to see a really good Bibbo Babowski. So, just throwing that out there, too. I would like to see a Bibbo who owns the uh, Ace of Clubs bar like he does in the Death of Superman animated movie. I mean, yes. <laughs> That's my favorite Bibbo. Like, he still has slightly the accent, but he's not like uh, the overweight, awkward dude that he's been. Yeah, like the the one in uh, uh, the the second animated or third episode, series. yeah, of the animated series where Lois is like, "Call Perry, you know, do this, like, let him know where I am. Ah, she'll be fine." Yeah, <laughs> like so. I need a good bibbo. But all right, that's all we got for these episodes. I apologize for my coughing and everything. I tried to keep it under control. I just really wanted to record with James. Hanging with James is like therapy. So it's always good. A good time. Check out the Krypton Report. Let us know your thoughts. Hit us up on our social medias, on our email, kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. Let us know about your thoughts on this extended super family. All right. And remember, what's up, everybody? Chase Smith here from the Chase Smith Podcast and Cavs on the Break NBA Podcast. And I'm JD, host of the Hyman Podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. And we are super excited to bring you a brand new show starting next Tuesday the Fanfare Podcast. 
The Fanfare Podcast is all about your favorite movies and our favorite movies and the best moments in cinema. To help guide our discussion, each episode will feature one classic, and we will grade this movie using a report card-like scale A through F. We're going to be grading categories like acting, directing, cinematography, the score, and even the movie poster itself. And we're not featuring a movie report card. We'll be sharing our movie rankings, franchise deep dives, actor and director interviews, and everything in between. Movies have been a major part of our lives, and we cannot wait to share our thoughts with you. Our premiere episode will drop Tuesday, June 27th, and JD and I will be reviewing Raiders of the Lost Ark in preparation of the release of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny on June 30th, the fifth installment of the franchise. Join us on the Fanfare Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. Here at Krypton Report, we believe in the power of podcasting, the power of speaking your voice and speaking something that comes from you. So here's a couple of podcasts you can check out with people sharing their voice. I am Brian Peters, the creator and host of Gravely Amusing. For the past 30 years, I've studied the history of gods and monsters in pop culture and our world. As a student of theology and history, I've tried to understand evil and its impact on us. As a writer, I've tried to share this knowledge. As a comedian, I've tried to make people laugh as I do it. But as a man-child, I'm still that scared seven-year-old boy. Join me as I share the history of horror and sci-fi, discuss classic and modern pop culture, and share a creepy story or two. This podcast may scare you, it may horrify you, or it may leave you gravely amused. Listen to Gravely Amusing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and wherever podcasts are found. Follow us on Twitter at Gravely underscore Amusing or on TikTok at Gravely Amusing. Hi, I'm Taria Maynard, and this is my co-host, Jania Patrick. We're a couple of sisters in Central Ohio who created a podcast. Our podcast is called The Confessing Heretics. The basic premise of the podcast right now, as we see it, is we're going to talk to you guys about uh, um, our stories in religion, would you say? Mm -hmm. um, this podcast is about sharing our truths, our religious traumas, and our histories. We'd love for you to join us on our journeys as we talk about our pasts and discover more about ourselves along the way. We will be featured on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Just look for The Confessing Heretics. We have a $1 Patreon. Yes, I know everyone asks for money, but our $1 Patreon each month gets you commentary tracks for releasing movies, DC movies, it gets you my requel series where I pitch ideas about movie sequels, prequels, or whatever. It also gets special bonus episodes of whatever else some of the friends of the network chime in and drop. So check that out for $1 a month. That's all we ask. Keep it cheap, keep it simple, and help us keep going. Check out the link in the show notes or Patreon Krypton Report. Follow the link in the link tree or in the show notes below, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, Keep listening to the Krypton Report. Look up in the sky. We just want to say if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information.